NE Precision was set up in 2005 by two brothers, and in the last three years have invested in three wire EDMs. And today, we're going to find out why. Eamon Farrell here from NE Precision. Um, myself and my brother Noel uh, formed the company back in 2005. We currently have uh, three billion comprising of 20,000 square feet. We're a subcontract uh, machine shop uh, and we're based here in Longford in the, in the middle of Ireland. We've recently invested in uh, three Mitsubishi wire rotors. The first wire rotor came in August 2019. The reason that we invested in the Mitsubishi wire at the time was we were uh, subcontracting out a good bit of wire roading. We had looked at a couple of uh, projects in the medical and the oil and gas which warranted us uh, buying the Mitsubishi wire. Uh, and literally six months after that, we invested in the 1200. Last June, we've actually bought a third wire rotor. Uh, so they've, be, they've actually worked out really, really well for us. Predominantly, we would have done an awful lot of, uh, you know, five axis machining on medical device parts, three axis machining, and even milling, milling small slots and trying to drill small holes and this type of stuff. And really and truly from the accuracy of the wire rotors, you know, down to, to two to three microns accuracy uh, and getting round holes and getting parallel size uh, as opposed to maybe putting on the mill, struggling with hard material, really trying to, you know, machine parts after hardening, whereas obviously putting them on the wire after hardening, you're wiring, you're getting parallel sides, you're getting an excellent RA finish. Uh, and again, you know, just running while, while it's unmanned, not breaking milling cutters, which is a huge cost. And, you know, just, just really, really got us thinking completely differently. Because we did look at various, various uh, wire rotors, you know, and obviously pricing them out. I suppose one of the main reasons when we went with Mitsubishi was that, you know, ETG are based in Newbridge in County Kildare. They're literally an hour and 10 minutes up the road. And to have service on, in Ireland on the ground to us is, is a huge benefit and Jamie and Carlos you know they came on board you know they really you know showed us the benefits of going to Mitsubishi uh, EDM wires to be able to pick up the phone you know call and say listen we've got a problem they're here within you know an hour and a half. So these are actually the wire EDMs we've just heard about they purchased their first one in 2019 and that was the MV 2400R after that they purchased a 1200R and the most recent investment is this new 1200R, which is actually the new version. So it's faster, you can do, you can get a better surface finish with less cuts. So all the technology is, they're always investing in the new technology. Now, you're actually running these machines. So what was it like? Did you run wire EDMs before you got onto these? So before the, this machine came here in 2019 and before that I would have had absolutely no wire EDM experience whatsoever. It would have been all uh, CNC milling that I would have done before this as I trained as a tool maker. So in 2019 the first machine came and with a little bit of training we got two, three days max training and now they're just so easy to, to pick up and to, to get going on them, you know. So what was it like? Obviously you just said you were you were all CNC milling, so what was it like going from the jump from CNC milling to a wire EDM? Yeah, to start you'd be wondering, is this for me? But when you see the difference in what you can do on a wire and what you can do on a mill, now the, you know, they're two totally different machines. But what you the different parts that you can make on an EDM machine, it's crazy the, the, the tolerance you can hit, the size of the parts that you can get onto these machines, you know, the, the difference in taper cutting, we can cut up to 15 degrees. Um, well, we, we spoke about this earlier, we, 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 neither of us would have thought that would have worked, but we actually have some parts here, but before we get onto the parts, I just want to, I just want to look at this because obviously you're cutting all these parts out of one plate now. But how would you have done that before? So we would have probably got obviously the material a lot smaller and we would have did them one at a time. So if I'm able to get them out of it, we would have put that up on a machine. The material would have been a lot obviously 
smaller, that, but just a few mil bigger than this, held it on the bottom, machined around the outside, drilled our holes. The problem with this part is the tolerance is, tolerance is very tight on these two slots. And this is three, three or four stainless. So if you try and mill this out, the problem that we were having is that the parts, we were losing our tolerance. Because, it, because it's broke, these legs were moving out and we were losing our tolerances. So when we got the wires, we changed it over. So we're doing them in these plates now. So we started off by just stacking them, sorry, nesting them. Uh, so we pre up the plates. We have a, a hole starter. So put that back in there again. So first off, we put the plates up. We do up our DXF, which we just put three little holes in here for start holes and another one here. So we start the wire and obviously the holes, we wire around these and then around the whole part. But then we said we'd take it one step further and we started to put multiple plates on top of each other. So now instead of getting just one plate, probably we'll be taking in, in and around the guts for an hour and a half. So we could use the multi-work, but then we said we'd go up the way. So instead of having an hour and a half program here, an hour and a half program here, now we're stacking them up. So we're doing five, six, ten plates at a time. And we're getting multiple parts in an awful lot less time. And they're right every time they come off. Now, we have a, we've we got a few parts here, and there's, there's a few parts Chris won't be able to actually, there's one part Chris won't be able to see, but can you, can you, can you actually talk me through this? Because that is absolutely tiny. Yeah, so this is a nozzle for a customer. And the hole, there's actually a hole, I don't know, can you see it? But there's a hole going through the center of it and its finish size is 0.4. So it has to be very accurate. So we ended up uh, starting a hole in it with the wire starter, hole starter um, with a 0.1 electrode. And then we feed 0.1 wire through it. And we wired out the, the hole in the center of it. Now let's be honest, could you have done that on your miller? I, well, you could have done it on a miller, but could you have done it as easy on the miller? Definitely not, definitely not. <laughs>